Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Colchester at Beck's Snack Bar in the alcove at the front of the store where usually during the holidays there's a 12-foot Christmas tree here and it's all decorated with gourds artistically crafted <laughs> by Ralph Irish. And Ralph has been doing this for many years because he used to teach a special education. And this was one of the skills that the kids really loved to learn. But since then, he's become famous for this Christmas tree and for the uh, Festival of Trees Christmas tree in, in Macomb as well. This is the tree I'm talking about, which is usually in this part of the story. And as you can see, there are hundreds, well, at least dozens of gourds on there, which he has made for the tree. And this is the Festival of Trees tree, which goes to Macomb. And look at the size of those gourds. And, and these gourds are not just artistically designed, Ralph. A lot of them have purposes, too, which is really interesting because you found ways to make musical instruments and right. kaleidoscopes and all kinds of things out of gourds. What got you started? Well, what got me started? Yeah. That's a story in itself, I guess. You want the whole story? No, the shortest. <laughs> the the short shortest. Short we got version, a lot to show here. Short yeah. version is we used to, I worked for when Miss McMahon's classroom at, at Northwestern Elementary, and we used to take the kids to Horn Lodge camping, and we always had a project. Mm -hmm. One year, I, on the way back, I decided next year we'll do birdhouses out of gourds mm -hmm. at our camp out. So I plowed up the front yard of the school and planted <laughs> gourds. I bet they loved that, didn't they? <laughs> well, it, it worked. <laughs> it worked. And they kept it going even after I left that school. They still had things. So, so many of the gourds that you're going to show us here today are gourds that you grew through the years. A lot of them more. Yeah. Yes. Interesting. You know, let's stay with the Christmas tree story for just for now. Um, I'm going to hand you some, okay? Let me hand you some. This whole box is full of Christmas tree ornaments. We're just going to show a few of these. And sort of, now here's a snowman. Here's a snowman gourd ornament. And how did you get these snowmen etched into here? The, all the lines on my gourds are burnt. I use a wood burning tool to, mm -hmm. to burn in the gourds. And I use inks and dyes for color. You, you're, you're holding a red one here. A red one, that's a five beans leather dye. I use dyes because the gourd shows through. Uh -huh. I mean, I can still tell this was a gourd. If you use paint, you cover the gourd. and It could be made you know, out of anything, It could anything, be made right? out of a number yeah. of things. What about this one here? This is just stars. Mm -hmm. and. There's a light brown leather dye that I used for the background and mm -hmm. the left it. The light color is the natural gore uh -huh. color. And then you dye, and you put paint the dye on with a regular paintbrush? paint, paint the brush. dye on with just a paintbrush. Okay, here's more stars here. You can see the same effect here. And there are, uh, honestly, in this big box back here, there are hundreds of Christmas <laughs> ornaments. And they're all there's really... about 125 in Just that in that box, box huh? Okay. And, uh, We'll get to we'll get to all different styles. As we go through this program, you're going to be able to show us how you, how you do the wood burning, and and how you paint the the, the dye on there. Yes. Uh, but first, I, I asked you to, if we could go through your grab bag of stuff, and you <laughs> <Yeah>. got <laughs> Ralph. You got well. It's a big grab bag. It, uh, let's let's go <laughs> let's go with this bird first, okay? Because okay. this this is just a hoot. This is a very fun thing. <laughs> this came about from a ostrich that a lot of people made back in the 60s out of styrofoam balls and chenille. Is that uh, right? And you said, well, I should made, do that with a gourd. My huh? mother made one. And I thought, well, I can do that with a gourd. Mm -hmm. and this and so, is the smallest one I ever made. Okay, I see, they're I see a gourd big. here. That's okay. a gourd. And then this was a different type of gourd. Uh -huh. And then this was a dipper gourd I just cut for the Handles. Oh, be darned. Now, can you make it dance or do anything? No, you can. You can, you can, <laughs> you can make little, it walk. Little, little with it. <laughs> oh, he's crazy. He's crazy. <laughs> but kids have a lot of fun. You were it talking has a about a very him. calming effect on kids. D does it? Yeah. yeah. And you, were, as a special ed teacher, uh, would, would, would know that. Yeah. I had a principal in Chicago at uh, Lincoln Elementary. He got a lot of my things and when kids would come to his office they he'd get them out for them mm -hmm. and here's another they, example of what you I don't know if you call it an apple that's gourd an apple not. gourd uh -huh. that's a variety and 
It looks like an apple. Yeah, it's perfect, <laughs> and you and you paint it the perfect I color. I painted it red. Here's another thing you do, which I find fascinating. You make kaleidoscopes, and I think what we're able to do here with this one is it, this has got a big enough viewfinder that we can actually see what you would see when you look in into it. Who would have ever thought uh, that you would make a kaleidoscope? That, that's actually lots called a telescope because oh, tel it has no moving parts. Okay, all right. That's a um, but you have some that actually do move. Yes. And the, unfortunately, it doesn't work for our camera because the view, the viewing area is so small we can't see inside. Right. But here's an here's an example of one of those that does move. You move this back and forth like that. You like don't that, have to turn it get, at all. You use, let gravity. What's in the wand is in oil and it, it flows. Oh. You have to turn it half around once okay. in a while so the other end can Uh-huh. And then flow. you get this, the, the flowing, the lava flow effect from right. looking through the viewfinder. This one's the same way, only it's like the old ones where you turn the end. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, this is a different take on... That was a cannonball, not cannonball, a... Uh, canteen gourd it was as high as it is tall now mm -hmm. this was I cut it in half and I put a dow dowel rods eighth inch dowel rods in here so I could have a warp for the weave these are silk ties uh -huh. I wove on there and it just makes a container and then you I, like to use geodes I like to use geodes, oh, Ralph. geodes for the knot here let me they're, show that. they're not fragile the gourds never break, huh? Well, I won't say they never break. Yeah. I've sat on them before and broke them. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't break it, thank no, goodness. No, it, it, okay. they're not as fragile like as they, these they look. Okay. There, I think I got that. Yeah, no, you didn't control. get it right. Yeah, that's all I'm not going right. to worry about that right now. <laughs> okay, now, some of them make noise too, don't they? Yeah. Show me this one. Well, this one you can make just noise with the nutshells. They're Togo pods are from Africa. This makes makes a different sound. It's like a one man band. Did you, you did you have to bend this or is that a natural bend? That's just a natural bend. It's a long handled dipper gourd that grew on the ground. Uh huh. You can have the seed pod hit the gourd, or you can have them separate. Hilarious. Any number of ways to play things. Now, let's start with the rain. Start we'll, with get the, we'll start with the rain. Okay. We'll get We're, the rain. You know, you, you get the rain before you get to the ocean. Okay. This is a rain stick. Okay, I'm gonna stand closer so we can pick it up with my microphone. You've seen a lot of rain sticks. Yeah, it sounds as good as any rain west. stick I've ever heard. This gourd I manipulated with aluminum wire as it was growing, I put on there. That's why you can see a little bit of a bulge. I didn't get it all that I wanted. Uh -huh. I wanted it longer, bigger around, and more pronounced. But when I planted the seed, this was the gourd I was looking for. Uh -huh. I wanted to do a snake coming out of the egg on the gourd. And, and how did you get the little uh, pebbles or beads or whatever is in there? I used glass seed beads and bamboo skewers and I had the bottom of the gourd cut out here uh -huh. and I, I use anything I can from number nine wire to gun cleaners, all kinds of things put up and down there so I don't have to open anywhere else on the gourd to clean it out. Uh -huh. And then it's got bamboo skewers in it and glass seed beads hit those skewers it sounds to make terrific. the sound. Sounds terrific. And it's pretty too. Okay, that's rain stick, and, th and this, I thought this was a drum, but it's actually more than that, isn't it? Well, sometimes that rain gets to the ocean. It is a, it can be played mm -hmm. as a drum, but it's really a, an ocean drum. You use your imagination. Waves coming in, you yep. Yep. You can get their waves. Oh, and it's beautiful. Get Look at all the work. Stand over you at night. Look at all the work you've done with this. You've got this rimmed in leather. It's leather. There's leather on the inside and out. Mm -hmm. I use rawhide for the drum head. Mm -hmm. These are bone beads. They're seconds, so they're irregular. All from Africa. Oh, yeah. it's exquisite. And of course, the geode in the, the top. Geode again. in the top mm -hmm. is just decoration. 
Oh, that's true. I like geodes. <laughs> and they go well with rocks. It's like the leather. It goes well with the gourd. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you, it's it does. Got that it's a perfect natural fit. feel. Is it hard to find a gourd this size? Yes. The gourds this size aren't easy to, to find. They're impossible to find here. Yeah. Unless they bring them from somewhere else. They grow bigger you, down south. They grow don't bigger they? south and longer growing season in parts of California mm -hmm. and Arizona and anywhere down yeah. south. Really. You've also got a storm inside a gourd somewhere here. Yeah. Here, I'll hold that. Here, put that one back. This one I call thunder. Sometimes when you get that thunder, you get a little lightning. It's Look perfect. It. If the camera can see in there, we've got a little lightning storm going on inside that bolt there. Okay, make the noise again. <laughs> thunder and lightning. That's terrific. <laughs> that is, and again, you've got this one in, in leather too. In and, leather. Uh, and if you want to play the making you musical play it. Now, out these of it, are you fish can... vertebrae. Beads. Oh, they are. Mm -hmm. And where in the world did you find those? Well, I order them online. Uh huh. Fish vertebrae. I'll be darned. Oh, that's terrific, Ralph. That is great. Dream catcher in the top. Mm hmm. I... Now, this is. Okay, we've seen that one. There's one over here that's got a bend in it. Did we look at this one this yet? This one's got a knot. Yeah, now, making the knot is a trick, isn't it? When the. It, you have to have an extra long handle dipper variety. When it's about three days old, they, they get long really fast. And in the heat of the day, on a hot day, they're a little bit pliable and you should take two or three days. I break a lot because I'm too big a hurry sometimes. Mm -hmm. But once you get the ball through a loop, Mother Nature takes over and the knot's and almost always And it'll complete the knot, huh? It'll, it'll just keep doing it. Just keep growing yeah. the way it is. Complete and then the knot. that really, all that does for you is it gives you a very unusual thing to work with, right? Yes. Yeah. All it does is give and you a And a handle. Knot. It gives you a handle. And uh, this particular instrument, it's a rhythm instrument. Make about any instrument rhythm you want. And these discs, these are just from gourds, that these, you, the pieces you didn't throw away. You just use these everything, are pieces. right? out of apple gourds. Apple gourds are, are thin and they're yeah, hard. Which is like this. Which is like this. Mm -hmm. They're thin and they're hard. And you know, you cut the bottom out of it and you, I make jack-o'-lanterns mm -hmm. out of them. And these are the bottoms. I tried to teach kids, you use everything you, you everything can. Everything you got, don't throw it away. So yeah. this is what we made. I've made a lot of these. I probably made, I think this is my 22nd one, so you know how many <laughs> jack-o'-lanterns I've made. Okay, one, before we leave this little, uh, this little demonstration, the biggest gourd I think that you own is over here. That's and, the biggest And you've made a musical one. instrument out yes. of it as well. Could you show us how that's played? It's a water drum. And, of course, this is full of water. And you just filled this These full gourds, of water, and it took yeah, big buckets of water to fill it. It's got about eight gallons of water in it. Mm -hmm. So it's a big gourd, as you can see. Yeah. And these are gourds that were cut in half. Mm -hmm. And you just set them so in they the float. water. Yeah. So they float. We'll pull them all up so they're on the top. As you play it, they, they don't sink, but they, they go down in and mm -hmm. it changes the mm -hmm. tone. Each one makes a different tone because of the different sizes, different thicknesses. Mm -hmm. Now, in Africa where they had this instrument, they usually just had one gourd with water and one gourd that they played. They were looking for a beat. Right, they were looking for uh, yeah, right, a rhythm they instrument, don't care not as much a tone, but you like the different tones. And this is interesting, again, you, make, you strengthen this by, by rimming it in leather, but you made it leak-proof as well. Yes, I used rubberized roof coating on the inside. I want to change it to black, but uh, that's beside mm -hmm. the point, yeah. I guess. But I've used leather on the inside and the outside, and I sew it on. Mm -hmm. Double stitched around. These are bone beads on this particular mm -hmm. board. I did a pattern around the outside, all burnt. These are slices of walnut. 
We're looking at these here. Yep, slices of walnut. Even those are decorated. Did you use a little saw on those? I didn't. I mm -hmm. bought the slices you bought those of walnut. Like that, huh? Oh, terrific. Okay, and the next thing, now that we've seen the, the variety of things that you can do with gourds, we've got to get some of your tools out here and show how you do this, okay? <laughs> okay. okay. That's fine. <laughs> It's an old building. You're very old. Okay, you'll have to accept my mess. <laughs> well, we're this above is... <laughs> we're above the shop now, and uh, this is where you keep your raw materials, right? This is it. This is where <laughs> you I keep everything these, right now. Look at all these gourds. And I'd then, say you have enough to work on for a while. A long you while. Got... <laughs> a long while. And then when got... I go to another show, I'll get some more probably. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you won't have something. to buy a lot more gourds anytime always real see, soon. Uh, though, anyway, always right? see something I want though. <laughs> Oh man, it's like, you know, like here, you know, you, you have hundreds and hundreds. Look at those little gourds there, getting ready to be decorated. Um, you know, I, I I looked in here earlier and I saw you can actually do sculptures yeah. out of these gourds. I mean, they're not just fun, they're beautiful too. And I'm looking at that one in that corner up there that has the flowers on it. That's a piece of work. Yeah, that was fun to do. Oh, That's, it's beautiful. Uh, I've done several of those. That's the only one I have mm -hmm. left. It's real art. It's real art. Yeah, you, you, and you're good at it. That's you can't gorgeous. see from here, really, but that's all tied together with pieces of rawhide. Mm. I use dowel rods, but where it's wrapped, that's rawhide, and it you put it on wet, and when it dries, it shrinks up, and uh -huh. it, I mean, it's tight as tight can be. Do you name your pieces? No, I, I never no, name No, that one doesn't that have one. a name. Okay, let's one more box of stuff before we show show the tools of your trade. <laughs> this just looks like a box of stuff, but everyone had you were inspired, weren't you? Everyone well, a little bit, yeah. Pull one out uh, there for us. <laughs> this is a buffalo tail I ordered on the internet. <laughs> Makes a rattle. And then you're known to stop by the side of the road <laughs> once in a while. I can stop you? by the side of the road when I see a turkey. A turkey that was hit a by a foot. car? Get a foot, yeah. yeah a turkey foot. <laughs> Here's a turtle tail. And these are all roadkill, huh? Roadkill. <laughs> In fact, I How was, did you dry, I was how'd a you dry it? In a food dehydrator. Ugh. I put the gourd on it even mm -hmm. before I dried it. Yeah. So it, it shrunk right on to the gourd. It's, it's hanging on to it. And everything shakes. Everything's, everything shakes. I made rattles out of all these. Yeah. There's another several, turkey several, foot. Several turkey feet. Turkey Here's feet. A, a turtle foot. A tur <laughs> <laughs> and deer, deer antlers, huh? Deer antlers. And I guess this one, that one shakes too, huh? Sure. That poor little buck, he got hit by a car. <laughs> on the side of the road. This was a leg bone, probably from a deer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is a coyote leg. Oh. I, I dehydrated it too. And that's what made the gourd look like this? No, that's a Marenka type variety. Oh, okay. That's a coyote. particular variety. Mm-hmm. Wow. So you, you really do make use of everything, don't well, you? I, I try to. I try to. <laughs> You are a recycler, reuser, <laughs> extraordinaire. Okay, well, we're gonna look at a smaller project than this one. This is, okay. this is a monster. You, this is a wooden stick that you put the rabbit fur around and then a big old gourd on the top. Gourd on the top. And a little dream catcher dream on the catcher. top. It's, it, this is fantastic. You mind if I hold on to this through the no, process? No, that's fine. Okay. I asked you, Ralph, if you would show us how you, how you start out with a, just a naked gourd like this. And, what I did is I set out a couple of, of, uh, of your ornaments that show how you, snowflakes and that kind of thing, and you would show us how you do this. So you've washed this now and it's ready to start working Okay, on. it's all clean. I'm gonna, first thing I'm gonna do is cut the top off. I'm gonna drill a little hole here. It's one of my handheld tools. Mm -hmm. This is just a handheld jiz jigsaw. I recommend if you're working on gourds, these little tools. Mm -hmm. I'm going to burn a snowflake on here to show you how the wood burner works. You 
can see it's easy to mm -hmm. easy to cut the gourd. It's this will thicker be used than for I thought wrap. it was, though. I mean, at the top. This is a pretty good is, yeah. pretty good penguin gourd. It's penguin. from Arizona. That's called a penguin gourd. Okay. It's, a, it's shaped like kind a of a shape like a yeah. penguin. And you'll save this. You'll you use. I'll save. I'll use else. this top for something. Yeah. It'll probably be a rattle. Okay. And so now you're going to burn. Now the I'm snowflake. going to burn the snowflake. You can get these burners. They come in many, many sizes. They have all kinds of tips. Well, he's already smoking. It does. It heats up fast. It cools down fast. Mm -hmm. It's w worth the money because you can var vary the temperature with just if the gourd's hard or variable temperature is important. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to burn a snowflake on here. Okay. And this is real popular because I noticed lots of your ornaments have, have snowflakes. Lots of them have snowflakes. you snowflake. don't have a pattern you follow. There's you just kind of each one's different. I like real snowflakes, right? Kind of, yes. But there's people who collect snowflakes. Mm -hmm. And that, they're very picky. Oh, they are. They are. <laughs> they can <Okay>. be. Are. <laughs> they want. They want their. That your snowflakes are different than anybody else's snowflakes, right? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you can. You can see it doesn't take very long. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing the whole gourd, I mean, that would take me all day to. Yeah, of if course, you're cover, to covering the gourd, because we'll I, just do it a little bit here, so you, I'd mess up. You're getting then. the the idea, mm -hmm. and how really easy it is. All these things that I I do are fairly easy for anybody to do. Well, that was. It's kind uh, of most of it is getting started. You know, you're not going to do it if you don't start. Mm -hmm. That's what I tell the kids in the class. Told the kids in the classroom. I don't teach anymore, but yeah. you know, you got to start before you can do. Right, and and you yeah. can't get interested until you. And this is a good time to look at the that compared to the finished product you know, too. You can see how how that looks. So if you do that all works. around, you do you, that all around, and you, you've got a whole bunch of snowflakes, then you've got a sort of then then some artistic work comes in because you got to set those snowflakes apart, don't you? Sometimes. Yeah. Then you, can, I don't know what color dye we got, but whatever color it is, we're going to use it. And you I buy use, dye, you buy different colors of dye, right? I use dye because you can see through it mm -hmm. and know that it's a gourd. You paint, you cover the, cover the gourd. And use a little, just a little bitty old paintbrush. Just use a little paintbrush. And this is a reddish. It looks this like this is a red. Must be. Oh, it's a bright red. And you just put it on. Is one coat usually enough? Yeah, it is. I don't see where my paper towels went. You want me to get you a napkin? Maybe brought them. And... Anyway, you put the dye on and then you just rub it off. And if you want it a little darker, you put a little more on. Mm -hmm. If you want it a little lighter, you can take rubbing alcohol and go over it. Mm -hmm. But you can you can still see that this is a gourd through that dye. Right, I like that too. I like that better than painting, because it gives it that natural. It keeps a natural look. It does. It, it does. Mm -hmm. uh, it kind of keeps things consistent. Mm -hmm. I use a lot of light brown and uh, some light orange. I can tell that with these. These are the colors that you really like to use. You like yes. you like to keep it I looking like very earthy, natural. Very natural. Yep. Very earthy. Yeah. You can, there's a lot of people do gourds, and I can recognize a lot of people's work just from being exposed to it. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure a lot of people, well, Ralph Irish did that. You know, mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. you got they learned style. to, they have their to, own to style. recognize right. it. Yeah. Although I don't know if anybody does the things that's quite as bizarre as you do. Well, you make a lot they, of different they, stuff. <laughs> I, I, I do, but I, the first gourd show I went to, I called Kathy and she said, how many are there? And I said, there's 65. How many of them do them like you? I said, none. There's 65 <laughs> different ways to do gold. What, what, you're <laughs> one of a kind, as are different. the other 64 people, right? <laughs> yes. All right. Yes. Well, this is, uh, you will be able to see Ralph's work. Uh, he, he goes to shows around the area. You can find his work there. But I know next year at this time, in this very spot, you'll be able to find that Christmas tree. 
in this snack bar, Beck snack bar, in Colchester, be decked with his ornaments. With another Illinois story in Colchester, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.